Hello, and welcome to Healthy Habits for Life. My name is Christian, and I'll be your host for this look into maintaining a healthy weight and living a long life. Do you know that you can eat an unhealthy diet and it might not show on the outside? The real impact of an unhealthy diet is on the inside of your body. You can be making yourself sick by what you eat and not even know it. I'm going to meet up with a real doctor, Dr. Sheffield, and ask her questions about diet and being active, things I think you'll want to hear about. I'm meeting her in the cafeteria here at Intermountain Medical Center, so let's get started. Hello, Dr. Sheffield. It's great to be here with you and talk about healthy eating. Hi, Christian. I'm glad to be here, and I'm ready to show you some things that can help with making good choices. That's great. First, tell me what you do at Intermountain Healthcare. What's your job? I'm a medical director focused on preventing diseases and keeping the community healthy. One part of my job is getting the message out about how to be healthy in our diet and lifestyles and how our individual choices impact the community as a whole. I keep up on the latest developments in health. I love working at Intermountain and I've been here for more than 20 years. So where do you want to start today? Well, let's start at the beginning of the day, breakfast. Do I really need to eat breakfast? That is a big yes. Everyone should eat a healthy breakfast. It sets you up to burn energy all day long. You need the energy to function and to start your day off right. The best combination over the course of a day is a big breakfast, a medium-sized lunch, and a smallish dinner. If you don't eat breakfast, you may overeat at lunch because you end up feeling so hungry. Eating some quality calories at breakfast sets you up for a productive day. Even if you don't feel hungry, you can eat a small, healthy breakfast. What does a healthy breakfast look like? That's a great question. One of the things I'll be returning to again and again in this conversation is added sugar. We need to be aware of the amount of added sugar in our food. It's a major contributor to unhealthy weight gain. We can get a handle on added sugars by getting skilled at reading food labels. So let's consider an easy breakfast, one that many of us may have eaten today. Cereal and milk, which you can make more healthy by adding some fruit like berries. The kind of cereal you choose is important. Let's take a look at these food labels. One is from a whole grain cereal with little added sugar, and the other is a sweet cereal. Let's compare the grams of sugar. The whole grain cereal has five grams of sugar per serving, and the sugary cereal has 10 grams of sugars per serving, double the added sugar. And this is what a gram of sugar looks like, about a fourth teaspoon. The sugar cube is a teaspoon, and that contains about four grams. So the sweet cereal here contains about two and a half teaspoons of sugar, and the better choice has a little over a teaspoon. The most recent added sugar recommendation for adults is to eat no more than six teaspoons, or 25 grams of sugar a day. That means kids who need fewer calories a day should eat even less than that. Now, let's compare the fiber in these two cereal choices. The whole grain cereal has seven grams of fiber, while the other cereal has less than one gram of fiber. Fiber is important because it helps regulate the absorption of sugar, and it also makes us feel full. You'll feel hungry sooner after eating the lower fiber cereal. Fiber is also associated with lower risk of cancer and heart disease. A healthy daily intake of fiber is at least 30 grams. So if you start your day with seven grams in your cereal, instead of less than one gram, you'll be off to a good start. Why should I eat lots of fruits and vegetables? I know you hear it from healthcare people all the time, more fruits and vegetables. Here's why. We were first talking about fiber, and fruits and vegetables are full of fiber. They also have the nutrients your body needs to grow in a healthy way. More servings of fruits and vegetables can help you prevent you from getting sick, or if you do get sick or injured, you'll heal faster with the help of those nutrients. You should be aiming for five to nine servings of fruits and vegetables daily, which means one and a half cups to two cups of fruit every day, and two and a half to three cups of vegetables per day. Your lunch and dinner plate should look like this half of it with colorful vegetables and fruit. The more color, the healthier. A moderate portion of protein may be a piece of chicken. For vegetarians, it might be a plant-based protein like beans or tofu. And a moderate portion of starch, maybe potatoes or brown rice, or another grain like corn or quinoa like we have on the plate. Whole grain is the way to go, more fiber. Don't potatoes count as a vegetable? And what about french fries? When I use ketchup, I'm getting tomatoes too, right? No, potatoes really shouldn't count towards your vegetable servings. It should be considered a starch and relegated to that fourth portion of the plate. When you fry potatoes, they become less healthy because of the added fat and salt. French fries should be considered an occasional food to have once in a while 
not one of our everyday types of food. And ketchup is simply tomato paste with lots of added sugar. It's just a sweet flavoring and doesn't count as a vegetable. What's so unhealthy about sweetened drinks? Well, again, it's the added sugar. And what happens on the inside of our bodies when we drink it? Sugar can give you quick energy and then you feel a letdown, which might make you feel more tired and hungry than before you had the sugar. When a lot of sugar hits your liver fast, it's just packaged into fat and stored rather than used. Now, when you take in some fiber, along with sugar, it can absorb more slowly and be used more effectively. It's better for your body. So let's start with an apple soft drink and work backwards to the apple, the fruit in its unprocessed form. So here's an apple soft drink, and the label reveals it has no apple juice and 41 grams of sugar. That's high, about 10 teaspoons, way over your daily recommendation, which is under six teaspoons. And if you look closely, it's an apple flavor soda without any of the healthiness of a real apple. Most soft drinks are gonna have high levels of added sugars. That's pretty much what they are, sugar water. Now here's apple juice. It's made from apples, 100% juice, which is good, but it's still high in natural sugars at 26 grams. This is okay to drink in small amounts and not too much in any one day. Now onto applesauce. It's made from apples, but you have to watch out for added sugars, around 20 grams, five teaspoons in one cup. It takes two containers of this applesauce to make a cup. We're getting some fiber along with the sugar, but it's only two grams. Now compare that to the apple. The apple gives you about five grams of fiber and no added sugar, and a whole bunch of good phytonutrients. The apple's my choice, and it's good at keeping me, the doctor, away. Oh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Right. I got gotcha. you. Let me show you one more comparison. It might be something you face every day. It's the milk you're drinking with your school lunch. Plain milk already has about 12 grams of a sugar called lactose in it. It comes that way naturally. When you choose a flavored milk like chocolate or strawberry, there's added sugar between six and 16 grams. You don't need the extra two to four teaspoons of sugar, especially if you're trying to keep from storing up fats in your body. Have I convinced you to give up sweetened drinks? I actually don't drink sweetened drinks, but are there any other habits I should look into changing? To be healthy, we need movement and activity. We all need to sit less and limit our screen time. This means taking breaks to stand up and move around if you have to spend long hours at the computer. Limit the time you sit around playing video games. The same for sitting and looking at any handheld devices. One of the best things you can do for your health is to be active and play outside. If you go outside, you tend to be more active than when you stay indoors. Consider walking or biking to school. And if safety is an issue, think about organizing a group to travel together, either on foot or by bicycle. Your own kid-powered active carpool. Joining a sports team is a great way to get exercise, and it can be fun. If team sports aren't your thing, you can look into individual sports like tennis or shooting hoops or running. When you have a choice on a project or chore, pick the active job over the inactive one. Being active is good for your body and brain and can lift your mood. We should all be getting at least one hour of vigorous activity to feel our best. One last question. How does sleep play into the equation? Sleep is critical. You need to get adequate sleep to feel your best. When you stay up late, you tend to consume extra calories during that time with little chance of burning them off. Then it's likely you'll feel tired the next day and many of us eat to make ourselves feel better and battle that tired feeling. Getting adequate sleep helps regulate your mood and then you're able to keep a positive approach to food. Do you know how sumo wrestlers get so heavy? They eat no breakfast and eat a huge amount of food late in the day right before they sleep. It helps them pack on the pounds. Now, that's fine if you want to have the build of a sumo wrestler. Otherwise, get your sleep and eat your breakfast. This is all great information. What would you say are the top ideas we should take away from this video? Eliminate sweetened drinks and move more. Our doctors who help kids who are struggling with weight issues say that the top two things that young people can do to manage their weight are to drink fewer sweetened drinks. Eliminating sweetened drinks entirely is the best way to go if you can do it. But limit sweetened drinks and get more activity into your daily routine. These are the two things they say help kids to stay at a healthy weight. Really, it's the best advice for adults as well. I'll say it one more time, eliminate sweetened drinks and move more. Dr. Sheffield, it's been a pleasure talking with you and thank you for spending time with us today. You're very welcome. It was nice to talk with you. And my wish is for good health for all of you. So I hope you'll try out some of the things we talked about. You've given us a lot to think about and review. I know we all want to live long and feel good, so we need to take what you've told us seriously. Thanks for joining me today for this look at healthy habits for life. I learned a lot and hope you did too. Remember, 
to limit your added sugar and be active. It's also a good idea to sit down and eat with your family. You can look to them as a source of support. And of course, pay attention to the rest of your health science lessons. I'm Christian, signing off, and this has been Healthy Habits for Life.